Coach Mata, when Phil Johnson was playing for you in high school, did you realize that, okay, he's got something that is going to work down the line as far as basketball is concerned? Well, I, I think, and Ron and uh, every other coach that's worth his salt, the first thing they do is recognize the horse on the team. And they put the saddle on him, and they ride him into the sunset. Uh, Phil was my horse. Phil Johnson, did you realize that, Dick Mata was going to be an NBA coach of the year and an NBA champion, and you were going to coach with him? Of course not. You know, I, I thought my idea, I, I had none of my family had gone to college. And so I, I wanted to be a coach. And I really didn't, at a young age, I didn't even know how you became a coach because I wanted to em, emulate him. And, uh, and so I decided, uh, you know, I had a chance to go to college on a, on a college scholarship. And so that was the start of it all. And, uh, and then we got back together at Weber. So. It was, it was great for us. Yeah, Dick Mata, you were the coach. It's from 62 to 68 here at Weber, and you became his assistant, Coach Johnson. I, I became his assistant in 1964. And how was that to have a former player, high school player, now right next to you on the bench, Coach Mata? Well, he didn't have to break anyone in. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> he knew what you were all about and well, uh, uh, all your cuss words. So after, yeah. after we had beat him to death that long, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You were the coach of the Washington Bullets, Coach Mata. You won an NBA title, but you weren't supposed to. And a lot of people give you credit to coin that famous phrase, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. But it really wasn't you. You just borrowed it, right? Yeah, well, it was a, it was a spur of the moment thing. A guy, a reporter, of all things. I know, darn him. Had the camera in my face, and we had just, uh, we had just beat uh, San Antonio, and it said, well, how does it feel to finally play for a championship? And he wouldn't give it up. And I said, you know what, out of exasperation, I just stole uh, Dan Cook's saying and said, you know, the opera ain't over till the fat lady sings. My wife came home and said, I came home, she said, that's the most stupid thing I've ever heard. <laughs> but she says that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's right about 90% of the time. <laughs> you could say your, your relationship professionally and otherwise is a father, son, or brother type of relationship. Yeah, it, it, grew, from, it grew from teacher to, to associate, you know, friend, coaching partner, yeah. that type of thing. So it grew from a seventh grader, 12 years old, to, to uh, a, a relationship between men. Yeah. So it uh, doesn't happen very often. Okay, yeah. Dick Mata, you retired uh, 1997. Uh, Phil, you retired a couple of years ago and you went into broadcasting. You're now a jazz broadcaster. You're one of us, whether you want to admit it or not. He's one of us, so you can look at him. <laughs> but over here on this other side is Coach Ron A. Baglin. Okay, and you know what he is now, right? He's a director of golf at a golf course in Fillmore. So who has a better job, the director of golf or the broadcaster, Coach Mata? He was always smarter than we were. <laughs> <laughs> and a good golfer, by the yeah, way. That's that. why you do that. <laughs> well, he's got a bunch of pros for kids, too. I used to uh, marvel at his basketball at BYU. Uh, he, he'll never talk about it, but they, I've never seen him golf, but if he's anywhere near the golfer that he was as a basketball player. He's a pretty darn good golfer. We played against each other at, uh, at BYU and Utah State. Really? Uh -huh. And how'd that go? Who won that battle between we, you? Did you won. guard each other? Wow, yeah. What? Yeah. what? We won. You won? Yeah, Phil Johnson? They had Did Cornell Green. We had they a guy had named Cornell Green. Well, he's just an NFL player. <laughs> 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 Did, you, Did you ever have to guard him? No, I'm glad I didn't. Uh, did you know that Coach A. Beglin is the only coach in NCAA history to beat North Carolina, big bad Tar Heels, in the first round and knock them out in the first round? Of Had the a chance NCAA to watch tournament? it. Watch it on television. Yeah, 1999. I was, I was excited. Harold the show. Well, I think all the all the Weaver people were so dang <laughs> proud of that. Yeah. 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 Uh, coach A. Beglin, talk about that year, how it was special, and just everything came together, and and you were able to to as underdogs just knock off the best in the country. Well, uh, I. Uh, I had some good players to start with, <laughs> and uh, the thing I the thing that I recognized is they were big and slow, and very good. But I didn't think they could guard us, so uh, we ran a play we called it Orange Crunch, 
it was for Harold. Mm -hmm. Everybody get out of the way. Harold and throw, Arsenault. <laughs> yeah. Throw the ball to Harold. And he had a great game. And then the other guys chipped in towards the end of the game, and, and it worked out pretty good. But. He takes the shot. Oh, that's going to go in. Yes. That that's it. Yes. Can you believe that? And in a previous tournament, you're taking on Allen Iverson, Georgetown. They threw up an air ball at the buzzer. Yeah. I, I still and and they, they got it out of the air and tipped it in for the game winner, or you guys would have been in the Sweet 16. Well, that broke my heart, that, that basket. That, that, was, that was tough. The kids deserve to win that ball game, but you know, you know how it is. The yeah. ball bounces some crazy, crazy way. He's, he talked about losing to Georgetown as one of his toughest defeats. Do you have a toughest defeat that you look back, even Weber State or NBA career? Oh, yeah, you've got, you've got some tough ones. We had, we had a tough one uh, when I was his assistant. We lost to the Lakers and we would have won a world championship, and uh, we lost on a last-second shot. Wilt Chamberlain, Gail Goodrich, Jerry West, we had Sloan and, and Bob Love and Chet Walker. You talk about losing a, a seventh game on a last shot. That's a tough loss in, in professional basketball. Yeah, when you had it won. And uh, when you really, we, yeah. we had played well enough to win the, the series. The, the loss that affected me personally more than any loss was uh, in this state semifinal game, uh, Grace and Wendell. We had that game won, and one of... <laughs> That's when I was a junior. One of, one of our kids uh, uh, took a shot that shouldn't have <laughs> right at the end, took a hurried shot, and... Uh, was that you, Phil? Uh, no, uh, no, no. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was bad coaching. It was in the wrong hand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that, that's, uh, that's when I, I personally became obsessed. And watching, uh, watching the kids react and watching us in that summer, uh, we became totally dedicated. Obsessed. Obsessed, obsessed with winning. I, I, I became obsessed. And we won the championship, and I resigned the next Monday. I went and told Homer that I was through because we'd, I'd taken such a beating in the town. Really? Yeah, for uh, I'd cut some kids the first year I was there, and I, I you think Nixon polarized the town? <laughs> I, I liked it because I was a sophomore and I got to play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While Abeglin was coaching at Morgan High School, he spent a lot of his time at Weber State practice, watching and learning from Mata and Johnson. Then, when they went to the NBA, he continued to learn from them. And these coaches, they let me come down to about every practice that they had. I spent two different trips to uh, Chicago Bulls, and they let me stay with them for two a days. Yeah. And then Coach Johnson let me go down to Sacramento Kings for two different trips. So I learned a lot of basketball. One word, how would you describe your stay, your experience here at Weber State? Dick Mata. Interesting. Phil Johnson. Uh, career changing. Ron A. Beglin. I love the tradition. <laughs> <laughs>